Welcome to the Growth Lab Podcast, where we talk about finding new clients, winning more contracts, and growing successful cleaning businesses. I'm your host, Matt Harris, and I run the Growth Lab. We partner with cleaning business owners to launch, accelerate, and scale the growth of their business with tried and tested systems and strategies that generate predictable revenue. If you're turning over at least six figures and you want to grow your cleaning business to seven figures plus, click on the link in the description and schedule a call. Now let's dive in. lesson that your business has taught you that you think you know other cleaning business owners should learn early on in their um, business journey yeah I, I, I know that answer instinctive and everyone's guilty of this early on ability is is a big thing because you know in the I'll give you a couple of examples you know you meet you meet someone and you feel like you get on well they're explaining a project or a one-off job and you think oh, it just doesn't sound right but you're not is to say yeah okay we'll do this and then they don't pay, you know they don't pay job goes wrong and because everyone's perception of clean is very drastically different mm. you know i've had tens of thousands of pounds at play when i knew this customer was a pain in the backside and i should have said no to the project but sometimes when you see you know, this project's worth that or some want to be seen to clean um you know, it, it can be hard. And I think having the ability to be comfortable, just saying, no, look, it's not for me at the moment. One that I wish I'd learned. Something I'm better at now, as I say, we know what we want to do and where we want to be. If someone comes in that doesn't meet that criteria, I say, look, I'm really sorry. It's not for us. I wish you all the best with it. Yeah. Um, and that goes with staff. As well. um, the early days, I was to make, come to me and go, oh, Chris, I'm a bit short this month. Can you lend me, you know, X, Y, Z? And, you know, times are hard. But, you know, someone I've been advanced on my wages this month, you know. In early days, I'd be like, oh, okay, because I don't want this guy to leave. Or yeah, yeah. You know, saying yes can get you in all sorts of bother, especially if in your gut, you know, really should be saying, so I've learned that and got more comfortable with that early on. Something that I'm better at now, but I need to say no when you know that you should be saying no, will we'll hold you in good stead and, and save you a few sleepless nights. What's one lesson that your business has taught you that you think other cleaning business owners should learn? When I started my business, I was on my own. And then I've always said it was about work-life balance. And my husband had a dream of running his own cleaning business. Yeah. Um, so he came to join me maybe three, maybe four years in. I, I don't know. But we've worked together for a long time. And working with my partner has been the hardest thing <laughs> in the world because... If you make a mistake, uh, when you're on your own, you might beat yourself up a little bit, but generally you'll get over it. Whereas I'll do things and I'll be like, yeah, I did really well. And my husband will go, no, you didn't. Or do you think you could have done this a little bit better? I'm like, don't you think it wasn't it okay? Or if you did something wrong, he, he wasn't all sympathetic and nice to me. He'd go, well, this is how you should do it next time. And so I was really lucky in that, in that after I sort of finished rebelling against it and hating it, <laughs> And I actually took it on board. It was like having, you know, that little helper on, on your shoulder. So for me, I think a lot of people are so hung up on running their own cleaning business and not accepting help and support from other people because they want to prove that they can do it themselves. Mm -hmm. But accepting support doesn't mean you're not doing it yourself. It just makes the journey easier. And I think if I yeah. not fought with him quite as much as I'd fought with him, the whole thing would have just been just just nicer. So that would be my lesson. Just accept support from your yeah. nearest. Yeah, I, I agree to that. I think it, it took me a good three, four, maybe even five years to kind of accept any support because, like you said, I, I was head down. I can do it all myself. It's fine. And actually... You know, having a team for one, but having a support at home just makes the whole thing a whole not not easier, but more manageable, right? Because you can you can just bounce ideas off, or even you know just have a rant as and when you need to. So yeah, I second that for sure. Yeah, um, and yeah, I wouldn't call it delegating because when you work with your partner, <laughs> it's very subtly and nicely asked. And I think it very much, uh, you know, it, it, you just learn from the people around you. What's one lesson that your experience running your cleaning business and also with your coaching experience what, what's one lesson that you think every cleaning business owner should learn focus on what have healthy habits oh i was just say healthy focus on what habits you have that prepares you for the bad days because you're okay. only as good as your bad days 
So expand on that a little bit. Like what, what would you suggest in terms of, or what has so, worked for you and what has worked for other people oh, in terms so, of these sorts of habits? I saw your morning routine. And I was like, oh, mine looks like that. Everybody thinks I'm oh, nice. absolutely mad. <laughs> so I started off with, I had a bad back cleaning, obviously. I think everybody does it. And I started exercising because of that. And yeah. the results were mind blowing. Like I, within like five weeks, I was like so much more energy. My back didn't ache. I felt better. Obviously I was doing a bit of weightlifting and I was like, wow. And then I incorporated meditation, a working schedule. Like I started t the time management classes because mm. it's what I did to prepare myself um, that helped. And I still have those habits today. And I've made, obviously as you go, you add more habits, but it's reading all the time about these good books like seven habits of highly efficient people like mm. get these books on audio and listen to audios all day long about how you can better yourself because it's not about that audio right now there right then it's stopping that little ego that voice in your head telling you you can't do it telling you you're not yeah, good yeah. enough telling you you're never going to charge that prices telling you that little oh you would never achieve that and actually what that is it's just your little inner child is still keeping you very safe and you hear your big person want to go out and like rule the world and your little person, your emotions are saying, no, that's scary. Yeah. So it's learning about this, learning how to love yourself in the sense of not this mucky, mushy stuff, but appreciate <laughs> yourself for who you are. Be grateful for right now, this minute. And everybody should go and watch this or download okay. the book, The Secret. So you live yeah. in this atmosphere of everything is going to happen in any case. There's no doubt in your mind. And when you live in this happy place and, you know, you're so grateful for what you have right now things started to happen, that's when you start feeling lucky. You're like, huh, these things are happening. And I wish I did that actually before, but healthy habits and certainly a really good sleep routine really put me on the map and changed how I turned up every day. I turned up very like powerful almost, instead of just letting life lead me, I yeah. decided I didn't have time to exercise. I got up at five in the morning. And I know a lot of people go, I'm not doing that. That's exactly say what I said, but I knew that I needed to try these things to be better. Like if yeah. I wanted to be better, I can't operate at level two and want a cleaning level at level four. I need to get there. I need to make myself better to get there. And then adding eventually all of these stack up. And I remember listening to the books at first. I used to feel so overwhelmed because it's so much you need to do to be better. Yeah. And then I got to a point where I was like, huh, I need a better book now. I'm doing all of those things already. <laughs> I need, now I need better and more. So that's when I started going to different books. Um, but I would say if you struggle with this voice of like, I'm not good enough or you don't believe in yourself, Mel Robbins podcast is awesome. Listen to her, do mm. the high five habit. Yeah, go yeah. and do the five second rule, go and do these things. Experiment with them, not just one day. It's just something that you do when you first start and then it becomes who you are. And once yeah. it becomes who you are, you're on stop. I like the high five rule and uh, the five second countdown, Mel Robbins. I, I use that in the mornings when I yes. don't want to get up. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> like a and it's amazing right? how it gets you out of bed, right? It does. It, yes. it really works. It really works. <laughs> no, that's cool. Well, look, hey, let me just ask a, a couple of quick fire questions. Is your one golden rule for running a successful cleaning business? Oh, wow. <laughs> Thank just you for that. Stump, just thought I'd stump you with that. I know we've spoken One, about yeah. you know staff and training. And I know there's a financial aspect as well, but you know, with your experience and having worked with other cleaning businesses, I'm pretty sure that there's a, a recurring theme that you have found, which is well, a platform to build on. I, I I would say it has to be. This is a people business, whether it's your customer relations or your employee relations, if you don't get that part right, nothing else matters. And to me, the employee is more important than the customer yeah. because without them and without the right attitude in the within the employee and within the organization, mm -hmm. if you're not working together as a team, it doesn't matter if you know your numbers and it doesn't matter if you have all the new business you can handle. If you don't have a team to accomplish that and work together in one direction, yeah, everybody's yeah. on the same page and that's ideal. That's not always going to happen. So you have to be able to quickly weed out the ones that aren't. Mm -hmm. We always say, hire slow and fire fast as sure. they will they will bring you down and there is no no point at all in letting what that one bad apple in the bush will ruin it for everyone so they have to go it's hard for owners to do that but that's it is, the reality it is difficult but the sooner you nip in the bud the better and what's the one bit of advice that you give a younger version of yourself 
before just starting out your business? Oh, so younger version of myself would be trying to, if you're thinking about setting up your own business and you're already employed at the moment, I would say set everything up Hmm. before you leave your paid job. Because I think it's easy to underestimate how much you have to set up and how much time it takes. And all of that time it takes to do that is stopping you then the business moving forward. You literally land and then you're able to expand the business through doing all your prospecting because you've got everything in place. I think you'll get a return on investment quicker by having everything set up whilst you're still being paid by someone else. Because there's nothing nice. worse than having that big long gap of you don't know when the next the next yeah. paycheck's coming from. It's not ideal. And I think I'd also try and outsource as much as you can as quickly as you can mm. where it isn't yours. And I know it's it's not that easy because you need the funds to do it. But there's so many sources out there where you can get short term contracts or people just doing a tiny piece of work for you. But where you can and it's not your skill set, don't spend hours on it when someone could take an hour and you could just pay them to do it for you. So as quickly as you can, outsource some of the things that you don't need to be doing. I'm curious to know what one lesson your fantastic journey has taught you that you think other cleaning business owners should learn. It's not about cleaning. It's about your mindset. You know, it's not about cleaning. It can be anything. Yeah. It's about mindset and nothing else. That's the one lesson I've, I, I've, I would like to, to say. It, it is your mindset that sets you up for what you're going to succeed. It's not whether it's cleaning. It can be handyman, it can be and so forth. And don't be afraid of diversification, right? Of moving sideways instead of instead of in one, one, one direction of it. If you've got good customers, keep them. Yeah, okay. I've got a couple of quick fire questions. What one piece of advice would you give to a younger version of yourself before you started your fantastic uh, Yeah, well, trust yourself more. Yeah, that's a quick one. Trust yourself more. What's the one piece of advice you'd give to a younger version of yourself just starting out your cleaning business? Go for just commercial. No, no, I'm joking. I'll just do it now. Lack of confidence. Don't let it stop you. Just do it now. Thanks to you guys for listening to the Growth Lab podcast. You can access the show notes and free resources via the link in the episode description. And if you got some value from this podcast, please pay it forward and share it with others across social media or leave a rating and review on whatever podcast platform you listen to because it would really mean the world to me. Hope you enjoy and subscribe and I'll see you in the next episode.